Rattini Burke. Drama at the England rugby team parade when pop idols Michelle hitches a lift. <laughs> Jesse Wallace enjoys a quiet lunch. <laughs> and we ask, was Miss World adopted as we track down Krista Berg's other daughter? <laughs> Here, what planet is Kilroy on? You won't have sex with your partner because you hate the way you look. <laughs> no. Your mother's in a care home and she's being drugged to keep her quiet for the convenience of the staff. <laughs> no. Your daughter's at the altar. She's just about to get married. And you threw black ink all over her dress. I never touched her! <laughs> Holy and naughty nurse Kelly, the serial killer, went up a gear this week. She smothered her mum and then stabbed a superior. every week. The hospital's been kept busy just from the staff attacking each other. <laughs> Next week, it gets even more dramatic. Here's a sneak preview. I'm not told to do it! <laughs> Coronation Street now, and Kieran's bending over backwards to make this wedding to Sunita work. I don't understand if you want to postpone the wedding. What? Give you time to sort out things with your family, and I'll brush up on my Hindi. Brush up on your Hindi? If you're making a list of things to brush up on, your Hindi should be at least third after your English and your acting. <laughs> uh, how clean is your house now? Look at this tip. Leon Raff is a rocker whose house is a bit of a shocker. And I've heard some excuses in my time, but really. As far as cleaning is concerned, I've been unlucky with vacuum cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty damn lucky, really. <laughs> You don't need a vacuum cleaner, Mush. You need a bucket and a spade for that lot. <laughs> The only way to clean that house would be to burn it to the ground, then napalm the stumps. <laughs> Strip it back to clean earth. Look at him. Could be a 24 rail party paradise, really, couldn't he? Where have we seen him before? <laughs> He's one of the seven dwarfs. Dopey, grumpy, happy and filthy. <laughs> but how do you make a place smell better? Now. The old favourite aftershave, dear. On a winter night, the radiators are on, you see, so the fragrance comes out with the heat. I yeah. pour a lot on my hand, lovey, and I put it all down here, along here. Yeah, rub a little brute into the radiators, lovey. <laughs> That'll bring the birds in. You should imagine lying here with a rock chick. You know? Yeah. yeah. She loves the aftershave and... It's got to be a night of passion, hasn't it? <laughs> Shave on the radiators, bar of soap in the oven, and a couple of Airwick solids under the grill. <laughs> oh, you'll be knee deep in rock chicks. <laughs> Million dollar babes. Now, I find this show uplifting because I think no matter how bad it gets, I can never sink as low as these trollops. <laughs> <laughs> what was the clever wheeze to make money this week? We've all got to kind of run around being dogs, but not on hands and ears because it's. Uh... Demeaning. <laughs> Pretend to be dogs, yeah. Not on all fours, though. It might be demeaning. <laughs> I must say, I admire the dignity with which she pulled off this display. Turns out she isn't needed by the director in the decision making process, and all she has to do is trot around like everyone else. Makes you proud, doesn't it? <laughs> the changing of the guard. Saturday night, and the BBC treated us to one and a half hours of Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you're a Martian landing on Earth for the first time. You turn on the telly and get this. <laughs> An Australian man who's lived over here for 50 years singing Time with Kangaroo Downsport in Russian. <laughs> okay, we don't need to develop any more weapons. We found it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and what did Rolf do afterwards? Perhaps he'll abandon the project when he finds nobody's willing to speak to him. I'll tell you what you'll He dropped into was. Emmerdale for tea. <laughs> On the big story in all the papers around Emmerdale is... <laughs> local sisters. <laughs> big news. <laughs> sisters <laughs> that are local. <laughs> of course not. You see, the thing with these rural places where not much is going on, they spread the story over a couple of days to make the most of it. So, uh, so day one, uh, local sisters, <laughs> right, uh, on mission. <laughs> Day two, day three, to produce <laughs> enormous cakes in here. <laughs> Look at the size of those two. Imagine the migraine after noshing that lot down. <laughs> All you need is a knife and fork and three spare hours. <laughs> Isn't it strange how people end up looking like their walls, though? The tank was half full, even though the engine was still running. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you now how to build a house of cards. I tell you what, he's a scary bloke there, Eric Pollard, isn't he? You disgust me! No! But to think that yesterday I really felt sorry for you. I was so close to giving you another chance. But not now, Gloria. <laughs> Whatever! <laughs> Hardest substance known to man. Hey, Zach, what are you doing? Oh, Zach, oh, he's such a brute! Hey. Ballet shoes! <laughs> yeah, well, he might have to buy his way to your affections, but he's not buying my daughter! <laughs> yeah, it goes diamonds, tungsten carbide, then ballet shoes. <laughs> Every year, huge numbers of ballet shoes are buried in landfill sites because they're impossible to destroy. <laughs> And with Emmerdale being behind EastEnders in the ratings, they've started to copy them. In the Queen Vic, they've got a bust of Queen Victoria on the bar. So in Emmerdale, they've now got a bust of Landlady Diane on their bar. I'm not just a sex object. <laughs> <laughs> you know when there's someone at the door and you've got a dog, straight away the dog's up and to the door, isn't he? But most of the time, it's not for him, is it? <laughs> <laughs> to go and sit back down. <laughs> now, most dogs, they never seem to work this out. Except this one, look. Uh, it won't be for me, will it? <laughs> Several one of my dog friends, uh, it's always for humans. <laughs> yeah, and the reason they don't do subtitles in Emmerdale, they prefer to cover it with sign language. I'm not telling somebody I don't know. How embarrassing would that be? Well, there's always the old magic tablets. The ma Hello? Hello? <laughs> they also do provide simultaneous translation for any babies watching. Now, I know, Zoe, yeah. but that must be really hard to swallow. <laughs> Even if your brother carefully planning to commit suicide. You can stop it! Days! Weeks, maybe? <laughs> and he didn't tell you. <laughs> your father was sexually abusing you when you were 34. <laughs> Jungle Canopy World now on BBC One with new girl Charlotte Erlenberg. Although the trees reoccupy the beaches, it's the rivers that are really in control. They're always on the move, meandering in giant loops across the floodplain. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've seen that footage before somewhere. It's... it's Emmerdale! <laughs> now it's EastEnders! <laughs> Charlotte gave us all sorts of new information. Think of a jungle and you think trees. They're the essential ingredient. Tell us something we don't know. <laughs> you can't help enjoying Charlotte's wide-eyed fun. Just look at the sheer size of those trees. And there are millions down there, as far as I can see in every direction. <laughs> We're in the sky. Look, everyone looks like ants. Oh, they are ants. <laughs> They're trying to make natural history look sexy. Just take a look at some of the outfits. It's the wettest kind of forest there is. What do you wear in the rainforest? Flares and a T-shirt. <laughs> Charlotte is wearing a sarong from Debenhams and a top from Asda. <laughs> That's far enough. <laughs> it's like a fashion parade. 
Tree. Monkey. Bird. Poor old David Attenborough's had to try and keep up. Here he is, look. <laughs> Who's that newsreader? You know the one. Uh... I'm standing here, yeah, and the fellow who got knocked down, he's over there. And I'm like to myself, he looks like the fellow who reads the news. You know, the one with the teeth. You know, the, the, the one with the teeth. Uh, the... <laughs> Was it uh, the, the... Hugh Edwards? That's right. <laughs> Now, if the Bill is the Marks and Spencer of cop shows, then Mersey Beat is the Lidl. <laughs> I can't help thinking that Jim Alton is being a touch lazy. Natalie, uh, do us a favour. There's a car out front, flash jobby. Check the tax on it for us, will you? So. <laughs> Yeah, this week, I'm only going to solve crimes I can see from my window. <laughs> Pop Idol now. <laughs> you know, I'm almost getting nostalgic for the likes of Brendan. He's got to be so macho, so macho, <laughs> big and strong, enough to turn her on. How much is that doggy in the window? <laughs> Bring back the nutters, I say. <laughs> Get them all together and release a Christmas single. I'd buy it. <laughs> this week, Anne and Deck did do a very funny sketch where the pop idol judges were all at home together. I wonder where they got that idea from. <laughs> Which brings us to our regular feature, At Home with the Pop Idol Judges. I feel a tad evil. <laughs> It's probably just something he's eaten. <laughs> Listen, I'd better get on with my project. <laughs> my project is all but finished. Beat! Yes, Master. Connect these cables to the TV aerial. Yes, Master. I've taken a good look of Suzanne, the voice of Michelle, and the cheekiness of Sam to create the ultimate pop idol. It will then release Unchained Melody into the charts, and I will have my Christmas number one. <laughs> it is done, Master. Right. <laughs> Let my pop idol live. Brendan, I seek revenge. But it can't be. He's gotta be <laughs> so mad. Big and strong. So Record of the Year on Saturday, hosted by Cat Dealey, and it turns out the song of the year is Mandy, sung by Westlife. The only thing is, no, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the all-new Top of the Pops? Good evening and welcome to all-new Top of the Pops, live from London. Here's what's on tonight's show. Now, two points. One, who's he? <laughs> and two... What's wrong with the old Top of the Pops? <laughs> this week, we were given another opportunity of voting for which one of Posh Spice's new songs we wanted her to sing next week. How about neither of them? <laughs> <laughs> What's the number you have to ring for that? <laughs> which is better, new Top of the Pops or old Top of the Pops? There's only one way to find out. Fight! <laughs> After the break, go on. Jim Brown.
Bannon on EastEnders lands plum roll in new Harry Potter flick, it's Dobby the house elf. <laughs> what do you cook as a nice romantic dinner for the woman you love? Oh, oh look, you've even done me a little candle. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll read what it says. All right, um. Say it I with spaghetti. Ah, <laughs> oh, but obviously, if it's for little Mo, get the large typeface off of Betty Spaghetti. But, <laughs> because she's a bit, um. <sighs> I'll be right with you. <sighs> Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> That's lovely. Mm. <laughs> oh. You like dynamite? <laughs> well, I got this instead. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> Betty. Mm, the cat's done a whoopsie in the spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, so the last thing you'd expect her to be good at is a crossword. She's been doing the same crossword since 1975. <laughs> She's been doing it for so long, one of the clues is the name of the current Prime Minister. By the time she's worked it out, it's changed. <laughs> Big breakthrough this week, though. She worked out one of the clues. Uh, cowboy sleeping up with Mafia connection gives Spooner a well-loved British comedian. Hmm. <laughs> well, Mafia's the mob, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the Mafia's the mob, of course, yeah. Yeah, and cowboy sleeping thing must be a bunkhouse. Yeah, cowboy sleeping thing's a bunkhouse, yeah. <laughs> a mob bunkhouse. <laughs> Comedian, uh, mob, mob bunkhouse. No, I can't see it. That's it, it's Bob Monkhouse. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, why didn't I think of that? Oh, dear. <laughs> Let's have a look at some of the other clues. Right, what's this? Uh, two down, tool for cutting down a wild pig gets jiggled up with a thing that blows in a plug with an extra R makes a comedian, right? <laughs> a tool for cutting down a wild pig. That's a, that's a boar scythe, obviously. That's a boar scythe. <laughs> that blows in a plug, that's a fuse. Uh, an extra R fruits a boar side. <laughs> yeah, no, it's no use. <laughs> the story of Derek meeting up with his long-lost daughter continues. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering why she never married. Where does Mary live? Um, she's got a house over in Lambeth. Married? No, I think the job got in the way there. She's a teacher. Yeah, job got in the way, yeah. Very anti-social hours, teaching. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'd love to come on a day, but I don't finish work till half past three in the afternoon. <laughs> <sighs> I'd love to spend more time with you, but I only get three months holiday a year. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know you're all desperate to know the latest on the nail bar. Well, Kate remains positive. If you must know, I decided to stay here, sort my life out. I think it's going to be best if I moved on. You're going to need a lift out of Warford? Who said anything about moving out of Warford? I've got a life here and a nail bar. <laughs> no one can take that off you, except the bailiffs. <laughs> and so straight away, Kate decides to expand and take on new staff to cope with the demand. How do you recruit highly trained manicurists? Put an advert in the mini mart. <laughs> Just to make sure it stands out, highlight a pen on the top bit. <laughs> How much is there to know about nails, anyway? <laughs> Hello, I'm Kate Mitchell. And today, we're gonna learn how to put nail varnish on a nail. <laughs> First, you take the lid off the nail varnish. Now, inside, you'll find a little brush. We're gonna use this to put the varnish on with. Like this, look. Put the varnish on the nail with the little brush, trying not to get it on the fingers. Do long ways painting, like this, and not side to side, because that will look a mess. Next week, I'll show you how to get it off. <laughs> Yeah. It's a highly specialised job, so before taking on staff, you would need to subject them to a rigorous interview procedure. Ooh. What do you think you can bring to the job? Well, I like working with people. I mean, um, well, you know, women like to talk about their problems when they're having their nails done, and um, <laughs> living in my house, I think I've seen every problem under the sun. Can you start now? <laughs> 
ever done it before. No? Can you start? No. <laughs> they did have one celebrity customer, though. Gloves on. Georgina gets to work on Brendan's feet. Bring back Brendan! <laughs> yes, it was Brendan dropping in on Channel 4's The Salon, the day-to-day -day story of people having their hair done. Brendan's just one of the many A-list celebrities who've dropped by <laughs> for a treatment. <laughs> Cheryl Baker did it, too, for a colonic irrigation. Do you have any funny stories to tell me before we finish? <laughs> <laughs> you heard the one about the TV presenter had a pipe stuck up a <laughs> <laughs> There finally comes a time for making your mind... <gasps> The last time we saw Cheryl on our screens, she was being pushed out of an aeroplane and breaking her ankle. Now we see her having a colonic irrigation. And what I want to know is, who's her agent? <laughs> <laughs> who's the guy getting her all these plum jobs? <laughs> well, we've tracked him down. <laughs> Cheryl, yeah. <laughs> How could a nice job come in for you? <laughs> <laughs> Boiled alive in scalding hot jam. <laughs> you will? <laughs> Great. I'll back down the script. <laughs> oh, come on, then. How often do you have sex? <laughs> well, usually we finish the show with a special guest, but at Christmas time, it's so difficult to get anyone. Hi, Harry. It's Cheryl Baker. <laughs> Filthy, nasty Cheryl. If you ain't dirty, you ain't here to party. Wanna get rowdy? Gonna get it in a room. Gotta fire up in a hurry. Wanna get dirty? It's about time that I came to start this party. Sweat dripping over my body. Dancing got it just a little naughty. Wanna get dirty? Dirty. Cheryl. It's your agent. Oh. Hello. Scalding hot jam, you say? Oh, yeah, no, that's great. I'll do it. 